a single footprint, preserved in volcanic ash for 3.6 million years, used with an eloquence that transcends millennia. It's not just a fossil, it's a whispered echo of a life lived, a journey undertaken, a testament to the dawn of humanity. This print, and the dozens alongside it, found at Litoli in Tanzania, aren't merely impressions in stone. They are the prologues to our own stories, the faint but undeniable traces of our earliest ancestors taking their tentative, upright steps across a primeval landscape. They invite us to journey back to a time before history, before language as we know it, to a world teeming with both opportunity and peril, a world that forged us into what we are today. Imagine the sea, East Africa, a vibrant tapestry of savannas, woodlands, and volcanic highlands. The air is thick with the scent of acacia blossoms and the distant rumble of thunder. A volcano, Sadamon, erupts, blanketing the surrounding plains with a fine layer of ash. Shortly after, rain falls, turning the ash into a wet, pliable cement. A group of hominins, Australopithecus afarensis, perhaps a family, walks across this newly formed surface. Their footprints are captured, preserved, and ultimately, revealed to us millions of years later. These weren't the heavy, knuckle-dragging gates of apes. These are delivered, bipedal strides, suggesting a creature connected to walking the water, navigating the open savannah. Who were these individuals who left their mark on the Tanzanian soil? Australopithecus afarensis, a species known primarily from the remarkable fossil, Lucy, discovered in Ethiopia, was a mosaic of ape and human characteristics. They possessed a small brain, roughly the size of a chimpanzee's, but their teeth and jaws were more than that. Their skull is particularly the shape of their pelvis and the angle of their feet, confirms their bipedalism. This wasn't an occasional upright posture, it was their primary mode of locomotion. The implications of bipedalism are the They freed the hands for carrying objects, for tool use, and for defense. It allowed for a wider field of vision, enabling them to spot predators or potential food sources from a greater distance. It also made them more efficient at traversing the open savannas, conserving energy in the hot African sun. Walking upright wasn't simply a physical adaptation, it was a gateway to a new way of life. The world these early hominids inhabited was vastly different from our own. The climate was changing, becoming drier and more seasonal. Forests were shrinking, replaced by grasslands and open woodlands. This environmental shift likely played a significant role in the evolution of bipedalism. Our ancestors were forced to adapt to a new landscape, one where standing upright offered a survival advantage. The question then arises, what drove this adaptation? Why did Australopithecus afarensis begin to walk upright in the first place? There is no single, definitive answer, but several compelling hypotheses have been proposed. One prominent theory focuses on the efficiency of locomotion. In an environment with scattered resources, the ability to travel long distances to find food and water would have been crucial. Bipedalism, compared to quadrupedalism, may have been a more energy efficient way to cover large distances, to the open savannah. Another hypothesis centers on the benefits of being nomads. Carrying a few, two years of growth for infants would have been significantly easier than the right posture. This would have allowed Australopithecus inferences to exploit resources more effectively and to protect their young from predators. A third theory suggests that bipedalism evolved as a way to regulate body temperature. Standing up by exposes less of the body to direct sunlight, reducing heat stress in the hot African climate. This could have been a significant advantage in an environment where overheating could be deadly. Finally, some researchers believe that bipedalism may have evolved, at least in part, for social reasons. Standing up by may have allowed individuals to display dominance, to intimidate rivals, or to communicate more effectively within their social group. It's likely that a combination of these factors, rather than any single cause, drove the evolution of bipedalism in Australopithecus afarensis. Natural selection favors traits that enhance survival and reproduction, and bipedalism, in its various forms, likely offered a range of advantages in the changing environment of East Africa. Beyond the physical adaptations, what can we infer about the behavior and social structure of Australopithecus afarensis? The Litoli footprints provide some tantalizing clues. The presence of multiple sets of footprints, varying in size, suggests that these hominins lived in social groups, perhaps family units. The footprints also indicate that they were walking together, possibly foraging for food or migrating to a new location. Analyzing the footprint patterns reveals further insights. 
Some researchers have suggested that one set of smaller footprints appears to be deliberately stepping in the larger footprints of an adult, possibly a parent. This could be evidence of early forms of social learning, with offspring imitating the behavior of their hmm. elders. Grunt. The social lives of Australopithecus afarensis were likely complex and nuanced. They probably communicated through a combination of vocalizations, gestures, and facial expressions. They may have cooperated in hunting and gathering, sharing resources, and providing care for their young. The size of their brain suggests that they were capable of some degree of problem solving and social intelligence. The diet of Australopithecus afarensis was likely diverse, consisting of fruits, leaves, seeds, roots, and possibly some insects and small animals. Fossil evidence, including dental microware analysis, suggests that they were involved in consuming a variety of plant animals. They may have also scavenged the carcasses left by larger predators. Tool use likely played a significant role in this diet. While no stone tools have been found directly associated with Australopithecus afarensis fossils, it's possible that they use simple tools made of wood, or unmodified stones to process food, dig animals, or defend themselves against predators. The freeing of their hands through by cubism would have made the tool use much easier and more effective. Life for Australopithecus afarensis was undoubtedly challenging. They faced constant threats from predators, competition for resources, and the vagaries of the climate. They were vulnerable to diseases and injuries. Their lifespan was likely relatively short, perhaps averaging around 30 to 40 years. Despite these challenges, Australopithecus afarensis thrived for hundreds of thousands of years, leaving behind a legacy that continues to resonate today. They were a crucial link in the chain of human evolution, bridging the gap between ape-like ancestors and the first members of our own genus, Homo. The story of Australopithecus afarensis is not just a tale of physical adaptation and survival. It's a story of innovation, social cooperation, and the relentless drive to explore and adapt to new environments. It's a story that reminds us of our deep connection to the natural world and the resilience and ingenuity of our early ancestors. Looking beyond Australopithecus afarensis, the fossil record reveals a complex and natural evolution of the with numerous hominin species emerging, adapting, and eventually disappearing. Some of these species were our direct ancestors, while others were evolutionary dead ends. Understanding the relationships between these different hominin species is a crucial task for paleoanthropologists. One particularly intriguing species is Kenyanthropus platyops, discovered in Kenya. This hominin, which lived around 3.5 million years ago, contemporary with Australopithecus afarensis, possessed a remarkably flat face, quite different from the more pragmatic, projecting, face of Australopithecus. The discovery of Kenyanthropus challenged the prevailing view that Australopithecus was the only hominin known to be in East Africa during this period, suggesting that hominin evolution was more diverse and complex than previously thought. Another significant species is Paranthropus Bosa, was a specialized bird, adapted to consuming fat, fibrous plant matter. Paranthropus Bosa represents an example of adaptive variation, where a single ancestral species evolves into multiple specialized forms, or each adapted to a different ecological niche. The emergence of the genus Homo, to which we are marks the of human evolution. The earliest members of Homo, such as Homo habilis and Homo rudifensis, appeared in Africa around 2.8 million years ago. These hominids possessed larger brains than their Australopithecus ancestors and were associated with the earliest known stone tools, the Olduin tool industry. The development of stone tools represents a major technological breakthrough. It allowed early Homo to access new food sources, to process food more efficiently, and to defend themselves against predators. Tool use also required a greater degree of cognitive skill, including planning, problem solving, and hand-eye coordination. Homo erectus, which emerged around 1.9 million years ago, was the first primate species to migrate out of Africa, colonizing Asia, and eventually Europe. Homo erectus possessed a larger brain and a more human-like body plan than earlier Homo species. They were also skilled tool builders, developing the Acheulean tool industry, characterized by sophisticated hand axes and other tools. The evolution of Homo erectus marked a significant step towards modern humans. They were capable of complex social behavior, including cooperative hunting and construction of tools. They also likely possessed a rudimentary form of language. The Neanderthals, 
Homo neanderthalensis, or another closely related human species that inhabited Europe and Asia from around 400,000 to 30,000 years ago. Neanderthals were adapted to the cold climate of the Ice Age. They were physically robust, with large brains and powerful muscles. They were skilled hunters, using sophisticated tools and hunting strategies to kill large game animals. Recent genetic evidence has revealed that Neanderthals interbred with Homo sapiens. Most modern humans of non-African descent carry a small percentage of Neanderthal DNA in their genomes, a testament to this ancient encounter. Homo sapiens, our own species, emerged in Africa around 300,000 years ago. Homo sapiens possessed a unique combination of physical and cognitive traits, including a large brain, a complex language system, and a capacity for abstract thought. These traits allowed us to adapt to a wide range of environments, to develop sophisticated technologies. The study of human evolution is a long and complex one, filled with twists and turns, successes and failures. It's a story that spans millions of years and encompasses a vast array of human species. It's a story that continues to unfold as we make new discoveries and find our understanding of the past. Returning to the lonely footprints, they remain a powerful symbol of our shared ancestry and of the long journey that has brought us to where we are today. They remind us that we are all descendants of those early hominids who walked across the Tanzanian savannah, leaving their mark on the world. The implications of these discoveries extend beyond the realm of paleoanthropology. They provide valuable insights into the nature of human adaptation, the evolution of intelligence, and the origins of human society. They also raise profound questions about our place in the universe and our relationship to the natural world. Studying the past can help us to understand the present and to prepare for the future. By learning about the challenges and opportunities faced by our ancestors, we can gain a better understanding of our own strengths and weaknesses. We can also learn from their mistakes and avoid repeating them. The story of human evolution is not just a story about the past. It's a story about the present and the future. It's a story about who we are and where we are going. It's a story that should inspire us to strive for a better world, a world where all people can live in peace and prosperity. The preservation of fossil sites like we told is crucial for understanding our past. These sites are vulnerable to erosion, development, and other threats. It's essential that we take steps to protect these irreplaceable resources for future generations. Education and outreach are also vital to promoting public awareness of human evolution. By sharing our knowledge with the public, we can foster a greater appreciation for our shared ancestry and for the importance of scientific research. The journey of discovery continues. New fossils are being unearthed every day, providing fresh insights into the story of human evolution. New technologies are being developed, allowing us to analyze fossils in unprecedented detail. New theories are being proposed, challenging our assumptions and pushing the boundaries of our knowledge. And yet, despite all our progress, many questions remain unanswered. What were the precise environmental factors that drove the evolution of bipedalism? How did early hominins communicate with each other? What was the role of culture in shaping human evolution? These are just a few of the many mysteries that continue to intrigue and challenge paleontological politics. The search for our origins is a never-ending quest. It's a quest that requires collaboration, innovation, and a relentless pursuit of knowledge. It's a quest that will ultimately lead us to a deeper understanding of ourselves and our place in the universe. Consider the implications of ongoing research. What if future discoveries completely rewrite our understanding of the hominin family tree? What if we find evidence of a previously unknown hominin species with even more advanced cognitive abilities? The possibilities are endless, and the potential for transformative discoveries is immense. The Litoli footprints are more than just fossilized footprints. They are a portal to the past, a window into the lives of our earliest ancestors. They are a reminder that we are all part of a larger story, a story that began millions of years ago and that continues to unfold today. They urge us to reflect on our origins, to contemplate our present, and to consider our future. As we strive to understand the past, are we truly prepared for what the future holds, particularly if it challenges our most fundamental assumptions about what it means to be human? What if the next discovery reveals that Homo sapiens weren't the inevitable outcome of evolution, but rather lucky, perhaps even accidental, turn on the evolutionary path, and that a different hominin lineage, with a completely different set of cognitive abilities, might have ultimately risen to dominance?